What if I told you you could see into your competitors' souls their every marketing want and desire? Mm -hmm. Well, you can't, but you can analyze their PPC, which will show you how much they're spending, what their top priority products and services are, what they consider to be their most important USPs and benefits, and where they're finding their most valuable traffic. So that is what, <laughs> so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So today we're gonna to be analyzing your competitors' Google ads in three key areas. Firstly, their targeting. So what are the keywords that they're targeting to make their ads show up? Secondly, the ad copy that they're using. How are they making people click and what features are they prioritizing? And then thirdly, how much are they spending in total over time and how are they breaking down that spend between the different areas that they're advertising for? To the Ninja Mobile. That means laptop. Now, for many businesses, their Google search ads or their shopping ads will be a top marketing priority. So actually, analysis of this era can give us a really good picture of their overall digital marketing. Now, the main analysis tool I'm going to be using today is SEMrush. SEMrush is a paid tool, but you can get a free trial at thankyouninjas.com. And we're going to be looking at a couple of different businesses today. We're going to be looking at one that's B2B, pretty hardcore B2B, and one that's pretty hardcore B2C. The B2B one is going to be lead generation focused around software, and the B2C is going to be e-commerce. So we've got two very different types of businesses here, and I've chosen these two because they're very different, but you'll see the way that we're analyzing these campaigns is basically the same. Now, the first thing I do when I'm analyzing someone's PPC is I'll just open up SEMrush, I'll throw their URL in, and I'll go down to advertising research. And that's gonna open this table here. So this shows us the different keywords that are triggering their ads. We can see the positions on Google that these ads are showing. We can see how many times this phrase is searched per month on average. And we can see the cost per click, so how much advertisers are willing to spend to get those clicks. We can also see the landing page, the URL that this traffic is being driven to. And then if we hover over the little ad button, we can see the ad copy that's being used. So the three areas that we're looking at are targeting, ad creative, and spend. Let's start with targeting first of all. And by the way, today we're gonna to be analyzing HubSpot. HubSpot's a B2B CRM software company. I've chosen the US because it's the area that they spend the most advertising budget in. And I've chosen desktop device because that's where a lot of their traffic is gonna be coming from. So when you're analyzing your competitors' target keywords, what you're looking for are themes. For example, I can see they're targeting their brand name and that they're spending quite a lot of money to do this. So for example, I can see they're spending about 124K a month on targeting people searching for HubSpot. Now in reality, it's not quite gonna be that much because they're gonna have a much higher ad quality score than some of their competitors, but they're estimated to be bringing around 24% of their total Google ad traffic coming through the word HubSpot. So clearly one of their big priorities is targeting branded search. But other than that, we can see some other categories of targeting that they've got going on here. For example, they have some free tools. Here we can see they're targeting the phrase email signature and they're bidding to drive people through to an email signature generator that they've built on their website. Now they're spending more than $4,000 a month to drive people to a free email signature generator. So that's kind of interesting. We'll come back to it in a second. In fact, we can see that they're running ads to this email signature generator from loads of different keywords. Email signature generator, email signature, email signatures, professional email signature, email signature template, professional signature email. Hmm. We can also see they're running ads for content calendars and they've built a free social media content calendar template that you can download. So what's going on here? Well, HubSpot has built these free lead generators to collect email addresses of people that may potentially be HubSpot customers later down the line. And if you're thinking, well, free email signature generator doesn't necessarily mean I'm about to sign up for a CRM software. Well, let me show you something clever that they've done later on. Now, the next category of keywords that they're targeting are what I'm calling tripwire features. So there are features of HubSpot software like the meeting scheduler or the email tracking software. So there are enough people searching for meeting schedulers and email trackers that HubSpot will drive that traffic to feature pages for its CRM software. So you can go to the meeting scheduler page, click get started free, and that will get you signed up for a trial of HubSpot so you can use their meeting scheduler. The final category of keywords that HubSpot is targeting is what I'm calling commercial terms. These are phrases like CRM, free CRM, as well as the brands of some of their competitors like Zoho CRM, even Wix.com, the website builder, and Squarespace. So just from looking at this for like four minutes, we can see HubSpot's entire search strategy is basically broken into four groups. We've got their branded search traffic, We've got these free tools, like the content calendar template and the email signature generator. Then we've got these tripwire features of HubSpot's own product, like the meeting scheduler and the email tracker. And then we've got these commercial terms around CRM, free CRM and competitors, just from looking at the keywords that ads are running against. Now, once we've analyzed their targeting, we wanna take a look at the ad creative. So remember that we can hover over the little green button here to see what sort of ad copy they're using. So the main things we're looking for here are what are the USPs and the features that they're pushing in these ads, knowing that they're gonna get customers. So for example, in this CRM ad, we can see they say, organize, track and sell with ease, best for teams of 10 or more, get it today. No credit card required, no contract needed. These are objection handling. They're trying to remove the sense of risk from the potential purchaser. Best for teams of 10 or more is really interesting because something like CRM or free CRM is potentially a really broad keyword. And not everyone who searches for that is gonna be a relevant customer for HubSpot. So I think it's really interesting that what they're doing is they're casting quite a wide net with these keywords, but then they're disqualifying people 
who aren't going to be a good fit for HubSpot. We see a very similar thing for email signature generator. For example, this ad says, use this free tool to build a remarkable email signature for your team. And that for your team is important because some of the people searching for an email signature generator, it might be your mum and she wants to put your face in her email signature to send to her church friends, right? Well, that's fine, but that's not a customer for HubSpot. HubSpot doesn't want to spend almost $4 to get your mum on their website when she's never going to buy HubSpot. So they're using this as disqualification copy. We see the same thing with the email signature keyword. Build a free branded email signature for your business. For your business is really important because it disqualifies the people that want to do this for personal reasons. The next thing that we want to analyze as part of the ad creative is where the traffic is being driven to, the landing page. For example, for the Zoho CRM page, now we would normally expect a SaaS business targeting their competitor's brand name to drive that traffic to a page which compares the benefits of their CRM versus that competitor, i.e. HubSpot versus Zoho. And it would show a table of the different features, show why people would choose HubSpot over Zoho, for example. But that's not what they do here. So that's kind of interesting. Either they've tested it and it hasn't worked, or they've made a decision not to pick fights, or they haven't tested it. And this is an opportunity for you if you're competing against something like this. Now, when you're analyzing your PPC competitors landing pages, it's also a good idea to check whether the intent of the landing page matches the intent of the search. For example, if this page was all about what a CRM is and what it does, that wouldn't necessarily match the intent of someone searching for CRM. Okay, that's targeting, that's ad creative, so what about spend? So obviously at the top here, SEMrush will show us how much HubSpot has been spending on their advertising over time. And this can be really useful when you're analyzing your competitors. If you see, for example, that their spend has been consistently increasing over time, you can make an assessment that overall Google search seems to be working for them if they're willing to continue reinvesting. Stuff like this can be kind of interesting where you see a big dip. Either it can be an indication that they've discovered there's some seasonality and they don't want to advertise during that seasonality. Or sometimes you'll see a big increase in spend and then a huge drop. And often this can be because, you know, they've tested a particular strategy for six months or so, decided that it hasn't worked and then they've cut it out. So you can then go back to the start just before that dip and see what are the strategies they've ditched and what are they now running with. You can therefore learn from their mistakes so you don't have to make those same mistakes yourself. But you can also see how much they're spending on each keyword. For example, we can see that on average, HubSpot might be spending around $14 to advertise for the phrase CRM, whereas they might be spending around $1.73 to advertise for email signature. This explains why they might have spent the money to build this email signature generator. Let's say this thing cost them $50,000. Well, if it means that they can get cheaper clicks and somehow convert those to HubSpot CRM customers more cheaply than they can through advertising through the HubSpot CRM keyword, then that $50,000 development cost to build out the signature generator might be well worth it. Now, obviously, this is a B2B example, but exactly the same principles apply for B2C. So let's take a look at Cult Beauty, which is a B2C beauty e-commerce from the UK to see how we do the PPC competitor analysis there. And by the way, if you want some help with your digital marketing, I'm just going to move this plant. Um, you can request a free website and marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja. We'll take a look at your digital marketing as well as your competitors, including your ad channels, and send you a video showing you how to improve the performance of the stuff that you're already doing. Just go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review to request yours today. Did I say it's free? Yeah. So same as before, I've just thrown their URL into SEMrush. I've gone to advertising research. I've chosen the country that's most relevant to this research, which is the UK, so UK business. And I've chosen mobile because they're gonna be spending a lot more on mobile than they are on desktop. So what can we tell from their targeting when we start with the targeting? Well, I can see that they're bidding on their brand name, which is totally as you would expect. But they're also being extremely aggressive with customer acquisition. I can see their entire sort of strategy just from the targeting here. They're bidding on branded terms like Olapex, The Ordinary, Charlotte Tilbury, Paula's Choice, and they are bidding heavily on these. These are, some of these are brands that sell direct to consumer. They are advertising heavily themselves. They're bidding on their own brand names. And Cult Beauty is beating Paula's Choice in position one. The Ordinary, position one. NARS, position one. NARS Foundation, position one. So this is a business that's advertising very heavily in customer acquisition, which tells us one of two things. Either they are totally crazy and they're shoveling their cash into the sea, or they have a very robust back end, which means they can monetize this traffic very effectively. They're willing to massively overspend for customer acquisition. They're willing to lose money on the first purchase, knowing that they can monetize that visitor over time because THG owns many properties. Maybe they're able to monetize that person across multiple properties. Maybe they're able to share that data between their brands. We don't know, but clearly they are able to make more money from this customer than just the first purchase. Otherwise, a lot of this stuff just wouldn't make sense. Now, if we analyze their ad creative, particularly on desktop, we can see their strategy here for luring customers onto the site. We can see there's lots of voucher codes being used. A lot of these have voucher codes, money off almost everything, 15% off your order with this voucher code. Like their strategy is pretty obvious. They just want to buy customers. We do see them using uh, USPs in this branded search ad where it says over 300 brands from around the world. There's something for absolutely everyone. So they're using their range as a USP, also over 90,000 views, also USP and then free delivery, but you have to use a voucher code. So it's clear that they feel that value is really their main USP. 
Well, the most interesting thing for me is how their spend has changed over time. For example, if we look at all time on desktop, we can see they only really started heavily with their PPC in 2016. This grew to a high in 2020 on desktop. If we contrast this with mobile though, what we see is that while desktop traffic has dropped significantly, mobile traffic has not dropped as much. It's quite clear that they are prioritizing they're putting more budget behind mobile today. And we can see that their spend is higher on mobile than it is on desktop. Then we can see how much they're spending on each brand. So for example, they are spending the most on their own branded terms, but they're also willing to spend fairly heavily on some of the brands that they stock. And of course, we can see the landing pages that they're driving to. So basically, all of these branded terms that they're targeting, they're just driving to the category pages on their site. So if you search Charlotte Tilbury, you see the Charlotte Tilbury ad, then you see the Charlotte Tilbury landing page, which has info, best sellers at the top, then categories, then a range of products with a search and filter. Pretty simple. Now, obviously, Google Shopping targeting is based on the product feed and Google's targeting algorithms, although, of course, you can use negative keywords. So you don't get so much info about targeting, but there's still plenty that we can learn from this. For example, which products are being triggered for these branded searches? How aggressive is their budget? For example, we can see that some of these ads are in like position eight, which means that they're not being as aggressive with their product listing ad budgets as they are with their search ad budgets. Now, obviously, analyzing Google ads is only one part of the equation. The other really important part of the equation is the landing pages that people are being driven to. Check out this video where we show you how to improve the performance of your landing pages and get them converting at up to 43%. By the way, that is totally ludicrous. The more you can do with your landing pages and the higher you can get them performing, the more you can afford to spend on your Google ads, which can make you significantly more competitive. So go and check out this video today. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, leave us a comment as well. See you next time.